I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua, and today we are going to be talking about the logistics of doing a border run, specifically doing the Nicaragua to Costa Rica border run coming from Leon, which is where we live. And the reason a lot of people have been asking about this, right, because they want to know more about it. They want to know what it's really like. And I, I wanted to get some video of the whole thing and really just show the experience. But, and I apologize, a couple things came up. One is we left really early in the morning, so it was completely dark for the first few hours of the trip. Second, most of the time is just driving down the highway, and no matter how much you watch the video of us driving, we do have videos of us driving almost the entire way on uh, Drive Warp. You can go see it there. But it, you're really just looking at driving down the highway. It's all the same. Beautiful. I'd, it's a really nice drive, but there's nothing to really show, and it would be a whole bunch of just showing you on the, on the road. Uh, so you can just picture that. The thing that matters is how long it takes, how hard it is, what to do with traffic and that sort. And then uh, in the border zone, you can't actually record anything, and I was not the one crossing the border. I spent my time sitting in a parked car waiting at the border, and there was a lot of people that I didn't want to film around because they were drunk and a little bit belligerent, so I decided to err on the side of caution and uh, not film while I was there. So I apologize because I know that even if there's nothing you need to see or know specifically on video, just seeing it adds a level of comfort. And I will do my best to record it as much as I can at some point in the future uh, so that you have something to, to visually connect with as far as the border crossing uh, process. But really, the stuff that matters I can't show you, and the stuff we did today was not interesting to show, but I do have a lot of great information that people want to know, and we're going to get straight to it right now. Let's do this. And in fact, I'm just going to turn the camera around because why look at me while I'm telling about this? I'm just going to wander through Los Altos de Veracruz because I needed to get out after a long day of doing the border stuff. I'm recording this within an hour of getting back and I have already taken a walk uh, to get some exercise. I'm going to walk some more and just let you guys see the sun going down over Los Altos de Veracruz here in Leon in Sutiava. And, and you can probably hear the dogs barking in the background. Uh, and we're just going to enjoy these views while I tell about the day. So, uh, first of all, if you're coming from Leon, how long does it take to get to the border? Well, even before that, why do we have to go to the Costa Rican border? So, to, in order to renew your visa here in Nicaragua, and if you are interested in what is a border run, I have a video on that. If you're interested in the 90 30 30 30 uh, day visa system, I have a video on that. So, if those are your questions, certainly ask them below. But if you're wondering why I don't address them in this video, it's because I have two full videos that go into those details, and you can check all of that out there. Uh, second, uh, why the Costa Rican border specifically? Because don't we live much closer to the Honduran border? Yes, that is absolutely true. In order to renew your visa, you have to cross a hard border, not a soft border, or what's known as a visa border. Hopefully, the, I mean, I know we do a lot to make the audio on these good, but these dogs are really loud and yappy, and they're right next to me, so even I can't hear myself over the sound of the dogs, so I really hope that you, they're background noise for you guys. Uh, so, um, Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala are, along with Nicaragua, in the CA4, which is basically a single visa and border zone uh, kind of similar to the Schengen in Europe. It's a little bit different because there is still border crossings and you do still have to have some amount of paperwork between them. They're not stamping borders, so you do not get your passport stamped normally. There's no requirement for it as you move between them and uh, they do not count for things like visa renewals. You get 90 days in the four countries together, not individually, which is a negative in a lot of ways, but easy movement between them is nice in others. So. It is what it is. So you take your, your pluses and your minuses. And uh, so in the closest borders that we can cross in order to qualify for updating our visas are either Costa Rica to the south or Mexico to the north. Costa Rica being about four hours away and Mexico being something like 30 hours away by land. As you can see, while Mexico is an interesting option, it is a very difficult one to use in any practical sense. So everyone ignores it and simply either considers the airport to be an option uh, and you have to fly at least beyond the four countries that I mentioned or drive to Costa Rica. Those are your realistic options. These are such cute houses through here. I hope everybody appreciates. We'll do a lot more walking through here in the future and look at what a nice car you get in this neighborhood. Uh, yeah, okay, so, so first of all, getting from Leon to the border, if you leave early enough in the day, takes about four hours. That's not bad at all. We're coming from the far west side of, of Leon and the western side of Sutiava, so we're crossing the entire city in order to do that drive. 
If you live downtown or on the east side or anywhere outside of the city, you'll be looking at even less time. It's really not that bad. If you're coming from Managua, you're looking at an absolute maximum of three hours and possibly a bit less. If you're coming from Chinandega, you're going to have a little bit more. If you're coming from like a Matagalpa or Hinotega, Esteli, it's going to be longer. You may be looking at more like five, five and a half hours. Uh, from any of the major population areas, though, you're really looking at about six hours as your maximum time. And for a lot of areas, like Rivas, Granada, certainly San Juan del Sur, you're looking at really short times, maybe two hours. In San Juan del Sur, you may be looking at like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Really, really simple to get to the border. And of course, the border crossing we're talking about is known as Pinas Blancas or the White Rocks. Uh, that is uh, the only major crossing. It is the absolute everyone means that when you're talking about crossing into Costa Rica. There are crossings out east, uh, but they're very remote uh, and they'd be very specialty. Um, if they're ones that you want to use, you'd probably know about them. If you're coming from any of the major cities, it will always be Pinas Blancas that you're looking at using. If you're going north to Honduras, you have many crossings to choose from. Uh, it's a bit, it's a different experience in that direction. Okay, so that is why uh, Costa Rica in the first place. And the drive is so easy. You come out of Leon, you head south on uh, Nicaragua 3, and also known as the Pan American Bypass, as the only major road coming out of Leon to the south in any way whatsoever, it is also known as the Managua Road. That will take you towards Managua, obviously. Uh, if you are wondering about the uh, ways that you can go to Managua, there's what's known as the, um, the old road that goes to the south, and there is the new road uh, uh, that goes to the north. It is the old road that you will take because you're not actually going to Managua. You're actually going south of Managua. Uh, taking the traditional road, and basically you just don't turn off. The new road is a turnoff from it. Uh, so as long as you don't turn off, you're going to end up on the right road. You'll end up going almost as if you're going into Managua, but before you get to Managua proper, you will uh, turn off on Nicaragua 169, the Managua Bypass. This road will take you directly into the mountains south of Managua. It will bypass the city completely, hence its name, uh, and allow you to cut a huge amount of time and more importantly traffic and frustration off of your drive, making it a very, very pleasant drive. This is a beautiful trip. That is an important thing to remember. This is actually, every time I have to do this, I enjoy it. Driving out of Leon is a lot of open countryside. It's not very much to write home about, but it is attractive. It is a nice uh, route. By the time you get to the bypass, it is some of the most beautiful terrain you will drive through. Absolutely fantastic. I love the, the road through there. I love the towns that it goes through. That takes you through uh, Carrasso, the central uh, state south of uh, Managua goes through the cities there, absolutely gorgeous, great places. If you want to stop and get breakfast, uh, you're looking at Didiambra and Hinotepe as your main cities. Why are these main cities with lots of restaurants and options? But of course, you can stop anywhere along the way. There's little places um, almost anywhere, lots of roadside restaurants, um, gas stations uh, generally have quite a bit of food selection here and so forth. So you have lots of options for coffee and, and uh, breakfast or whatever when you're on the road. Uh, but those are the big cities in the middle. That's where you're likely going to want to stop. Heading south from there, you go through Rivas, which is also a very beautiful drive. This is the famous. And by the time you go through Hinotepe, you've merged with uh, Nicaragua 4 coming in from Granada. And you come onto the merged road that for some reason, for part of it, is known as Nicaragua 2. And at another time is known as Nicaragua 1, the Pan American. In both cases, that is the Pan American Highway. I'm just going to show this real quickly. We walk down this kind of sidewalk slash drainage thing um, on one of the recent videos, and that is the little uh, automotive construction shop up there. We did not go the direction I am now heading, so uh, this is kind of new. We'll do all this on other videos separately, uh, but I just want to, for those who are watching for the first time, this is new footage. Uh, and so all of this drive, just beautiful countryside. It's picturesque. It's, it's uh, not very heavy traffic under normal circumstances. It's, it's relaxing. It's, it's a beautiful four-hour drive. I really do enjoy it. Um, and, and Rivas as well. Lots of restaurants, lots of gas stations. Um, and if you want to make side trips, you have easy accessibility to Ometepe, San Juan del Sur, and even Granada is not that far off the path. And all that's if you're coming from Leon. But a lot of my viewers are interested in Leon because that's where we're coming from. So we tend to uh, get a lot of of viewers who are specifically interested in this region of the country. So that particular path and that particular timing matter for people coming from here. 
So four hours, really not a big deal. We got to the border. Uh, when you go to the border, uh, you don't want to drive yourself. If you can help it, have someone drive you, whether it's a taxi or a friend, whatever. Uh, today, uh, we drove ourselves in our own car, so we just parked on the side. It's that easy. You just pull over and leave the car. And Paul, who's the only one doing the, the crossing today, he walked in and did the crossing on foot, which is pretty easy. Now, you have to pay, I believe it's $14 to leave Nicaragua. You pay nothing to enter uh, Costa Rica. So that is your cost of going one direction. Uh, when you turn around, now this is officially you are not guaranteed the right to simply come back in. Of course, whenever you're doing a border crossing, nobody guarantees that you're going to get to come into the new place that you're going to. That is never the case, right? Never never act like it's a guarantee. Never act like they owe you something. But the uh, assumption is that you need to spend 72 hours outside of Nicaragua before coming back in from a visa border country. So Costa Rica, Panama, anything like that. But it is also common, as long as you've done nothing wrong, you're being very polite, not causing any problems, everyone's in a good mood, there's a really good chance that they're simply going to let you come back in. That is a common thing. And if you go through the border any amount, you see people doing the turnaround, as we call it, all the time. It's actually quite a common thing to do. We have friends who did it last week, and we tried it this week, and it worked out just fine in this particular case. So Paul was able to go out, told everyone, I'm coming right back in. What is the purpose of your visit? I'm doing the turnaround. Now, in this particular case, Costa Rica required him to have a return ticket on an airlines. Not a return ticket, but an onward ticket proof of being able to leave the country. We do know other people have done this and have not needed that. Now, of course, you can buy a ticket and cancel it within the same day. There's ways to do that, and that's viable. Uh, just be aware you need to be prepared to do that. You have to be able to produce that ticket, and you may get lucky and not have to do it, but always be ready that you may have to uh, you may have to do it at a moment's notice. So make sure you have data on your phone. Make sure you have a website you can go to. Make sure you know which, uh, which airlines are going to give you refunds and what you need to do to get those refunds and so forth. Uh, it's just one of those things you have to be prepared for, and it's not unique to Costa Rica. It is not something you have to do for Nicaragua, but lots of countries do require that. So it is a general traveler skill and thing to be aware of at all times. So in this case, they did require it. So he quickly had to go on Southwest Airlines website and get a flight out of Costa Rica, which he will try to get refunded uh, this evening. Once he did that, he was able to turn around. He did have to pay the exit taxes in Costa Rica. Now, I don't know how these are calculated, uh, but for him, the exit tax was $10. Now, we've been out of Costa Rica as a family many times, and at no point have we ever been asked to pay or informed of a tax. There's nothing that guides you to pay a tax. There's nothing that asks you to pay one. It's, not, it's There's no notifications. Uh, and unless they, they ask for it, this is a really beautiful house, by the way, with here with the barking dog. Um, there's really nothing to, to make you go pay it because it's simply not a requirement. So we're not sure what triggered it in Paul's case, um, but it's just $10. So be prepared. There may be a tax of $10. I assume that is per person. I don't know how else it could be done. And that is just simply a small extra cost uh, that you may have to pay. Um, I think I'm on a, a road that ends here. I'm not really sure. There's a really interesting house nestled here at the end and uh so he went uh through the exit of costa rica paid his ten dollars uh and then came back into nicaragua and the entrance into nicaragua is thirteen dollars so there's a number of fees that do add up we're gonna go down to the end here and just see where this goes for those hopefully you can see it there are more houses down here uh, but i'm not sure where's the best place to go oh, this is a cute dog look at you so uh, that took all of that took him about two hours to go through. Uh, just had a backpack, didn't need anything extra. Um, certainly, you can go in and spend time. Now he was prepared. You want you want to bring enough clothes and be ready that if they 
uh, enforce the 72 hour requirement that you're able to do it. So be prepared. Don't, don't go in and be uh, upset if you can't get the immediate turnaround. Expect that you're going to be stuck for 72 hours and be happy if you're able to do the turnaround if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, go enjoy your time in Costa Rica. Uh, but this was so easy, so minor, and really not very expensive when you, when you put the, those numbers together, right? 13, 14, and 10, you're only looking at $37, right? So this is not a ton of money, uh, and it, you'll spend more on the gas to get to and from. You'll spend more on breakfast that you eat while doing all of this than you will on the actual crossing. We are suspicious that Costa Rica does the exit tax when you do the turnaround, specifically because they make no money on you being in the country, because you're really just wasting their resources when you do a turnaround like that. Whereas, uh, like when we go to Costa Rica, we spend several days, we obviously spend lots of money at restaurants and hotels and so forth. And so our guess is that they don't uh, try to tax us an exit tax, because they want us to happily come back and spend much more money. If they start taxing us for just leaving, we're much more likely to to avoid spending time in Costa Rica altogether. So it makes sense that they would tax someone uh, doing the turnaround and not someone spending a few days. I don't know. Or maybe we've just gotten lucky that they only randomly inform people of the process. Uh, and that was really it. Doing all that was so easy. And as soon as he was done uh, with the Nicaragua side, uh, and of course you need, uh, you don't need an onward ticket or anything like that in Nicaragua, but you do need to have uh, the address of where you're staying, its phone number, your passport, that kind of stuff. You needed that to get out into Costa Rica. Anyway, when you go into Costa Rica and they ask where you're staying, you just have to say, oh, this is absolutely terrible. That's a chain on the horse's feet. I mean, he can walk and eat and stuff, but, ugh, I hate how they handle tying up horses here. And, um, but at least they can wander around, right? I mean, it's, it's not all negative, but it's not great either. <sighs> uh, normally it is a uh, cloth. Um, uh, when you add it all up, it really is a, a simple process and that you only necessarily need to do this twice a year. Twice a year. When we were in Texas, every time we would go to visit uh, Dominica's family, it was a five hour drive to get there. Um, and here it's only a four hour drive to get to the border. And we would do that far more than twice a year. And so things that we considered normal, simple drives when we lived in the U.S. Um, I realize, I'm going to turn the camera around because of where the sun is, I realize that when you move to another country, your perspective on how far things are going to change or whatever, when it started this. But uh, when you're uh, when you're comparing to what you're used to uh, back in the United States, the distance that you have to drive to do normal things or, or, or really uh, extreme things like, like doing your border run actually become like, wow, that's when I compare that to what I'm used to back home, right? That's really not bad at all. That's nothing. I would do that in the United States without thinking. If you were like, oh, I need to make a, a run to a city four hours away, which would be a really close city in the U.S., and I need to spend two hours doing some errands, can you come with me, right? You'd be like, yeah, whatever. Like, that's, that's a, nothing, a nothing request, a, a really simple thing. Uh, but here, you get so used to everything being so close and so simple and so fast that the idea that you would do something so dramatic feels like a lot of effort. When in reality, it is not. I'm gonna go back up the street that we didn't go down. I, d I did get filmed at that last house. That was interesting. Someone popped out and filmed me coming down the road. Can't complain, I'm filming everybody else. Um, there's some really pretty stuff along here and I'm in the way of the cars. It does make you wonder why are there sidewalks when there's also trees in the middle of them and stuff like there's no reason to have sidewalks here. They did a nice job in their garden. Uh, and so that was the border run. And so four hours back, uh, pretty much Leon sits at towards the hardest in the country to do the border runs. It's not the absolute hardest. Chinandega, for example, Esteli, a little bit worse. But in general, you're, you're very much on the it's harder than other places side of things. And even coming from here, it's incredibly easy. If you're in Granada, Managua, any of the major cities, any of the big tourist centers, you're going to be so much closer to the beach that uh, doing these border runs will be absolutely nothing at all. And uh, uh, very, very much something that it sounds like a lot of work. I realize when, when you're hearing about it and you're being told like, oh, this is something you're going to have to, you're going to have to put up with, you're going to have to deal with, you have to be aware of. 
yeah, it sucks that you need to be aware of it, but once you get used to it, once you are aware of what it actually entails and what you have to do, um, you know, the first time will probably be just a little bit nerve wracking because you're going to question, where do I have to go? Who do I talk to? Are they really going to let me back in? Am I going to have all the right information? When I start this, once you've done it, once you've done it at all, you're going to uh, have this feeling of, oh, that was so simple and so easy and so cheap. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to, you know, uh, be concerned about it. I just have to put it on the calendar, know when I have to do it, hop in the car and do this real simple run. And if you don't want to take the car, there's lots of buses that go to the border and you can do the same thing with the buses. And with the buses, you'll have the return ticket in most cases. Now the, the buses will not do the turnaround in quite the same way. They will take you, I have to turn because the light, uh, they will take you to Liberia and you'll stay in Liberia for a night and do the turnaround that way. So you end up with at least one night, if not the three. But then they have the onward ticket taken care of and they take you all the way back to Leon and so it gets easy in that way. One way or another, it is an easy thing with a little bit of effort, a little bit of planning, a little bit of know-how, and you're gonna say, oh, why was I worried about that? I don't need to be worried about that. That is so easy, not an issue. All right, I know there's gonna be questions about doing the border runs. There's gonna be things I didn't think of mentioning or things that you guys have unique questions on. Get in the comments, ask away. Let's talk about what experiences have you had. Keep in mind, the, the borders do change pretty often, especially because you're dealing with two different countries. So Nicaragua requirements change from time to time. Costa Rica changes from time to time. And uh, there's always the possibility that something new uh, will, will be uh, a rule or available as an option or whatever. So don't be surprised that things will change. And uh, we'll continue to make these videos and keep you guys up to date on what we find on different options. And uh, oh, cute little doggies. So many cute doggies everywhere. Ah, remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. We would really appreciate it that you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And of course, share on social media, tell your friends about the show. And it's a great time to come visit Nicaragua. Things are good. The weather is beautiful. It is time to hit the beach, go volcano boarding, explore the jungles, uh, go see some uh, interesting ruins, check out the museums, go to the cities and eat amazing healthy food, get out and enjoy nature, maybe do some surfing. I will see all all of you hopefully in person here in beautiful Nicaragua tomorrow.